So, um, how do we find these two idiots? Jake asked. Good question, Jake. I was wondering that myself, I admitted. What did you say their names were again? Sydney inquired. One of their names is Sam. The main character never mentioned his name. Wait a minute, Matt. Is this guy a little bit bigger and kind of emo looking? I think I went to school with someone like that. He was always hanging out with a scrawny dude named Alex, Jake said. That sounds kind of accurate, Jake. It's all we have to go off of, so let's just hope that that's who it is. I follow him on Instagram, and I'll reach out to him, Jake said, and began searching through his Instagram to find Sam. I turned to Sydney. Are you ready for this, Sid? It might be intense. Sydney then nodded. I'm ready for whatever this thing has to throw at us. I've never dealt with the occult before, though, she confessed. I'm hoping we won't have to interact with this thing too much. If we can just find a copy of that spell book that Sam had, we might be able to reverse the damage. Duh, I got an address. 125 North Appling Road. He's ready for us whenever. Okay, is everyone ready to go? Let's take this show on the road. We arrived at Sam's house a few moments later. The area was not the best, but his house appeared to be well kept from the outside. We hopped out of the car and marched up to the front door. Jake then knocked. The door slowly creaked open. Someone peeked at us through the slim crack. Jake? Yes, Sam, it's me. How's it going? He opened the door the rest of the way, revealing a disheveled, sleep-deprived man. He looked awful. Deep purple bags rested beneath his eyes, and his hair was tangled in a rat's nest. The stench that weaved into my nostrils made it abundantly clear that he had not showered in some time. Sam smiled weakly at us. Uh, not so good, Jake, as you can see. Come on in. Sorry for the mess. We entered his cluttered home. Books and papers were thrown everywhere, to the point to where I could barely make out the floor. Empty takeout boxes and beer cans adorned every visible surface. A grungy stained couch accounted for the only furniture in sight. Atop of it sat a college-aged man wearing all black. Tattoos accompanied his arms and a bull ring protruded from his nose. He obviously had not fared much better than his friend. Jake, I'm sure you remember Alex. What's up? He said not bothering to stand up. Hey, Alex. Long time no see, buddy. I'm not your buddy. Remember swirly time? Yeah, I bet you don't. Had me and about 15 other kids on a weekly rotation. <laughs> Fuck you for that. Sidney then glared at Jake. He anxiously rubbed the back of his neck. Hey, it was funny at the time. Not so funny looking back on it now. I'm sorry. Yeah, whatever. Who are you two? Alex asked, directing his attention to Sidney and I. We proceeded toward the couch to greet him. He rose from his spot to welcome us. Hey, I'm Matt, I said, firmly gripping his hand. Jake's brother. Sorry for, well, him. I don't associate with his crowd. Yeah, I think I remember you. You always stuck to your own devices. I dig that. Then who might you be? I'm Sydney. Nice to meet you, she said, extending her hand. Instead of shaking it, Alex lifted it to his lips and kissed it. Sydney recoiled in disgust. It is a pleasure to meet you. What is a pretty lady like yourself doing hanging out with these miscreants? I balled my fists up staring daggers at Alex's forehead. They're my friends, and they're not miscreants, she said matter-of-factly, taking refuge behind me. Yeah, looks like toilet time might be making a comeback, Jake seethed, stepping toward the couch. Oh yeah, try me. The two then scowled at each other. The tension in the air was palpable. Whoa, 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 you guys. 
There's no need for things to get out of hand. Let's just take a few deep breaths, huh, and get everything out of our systems, Sam said, failing to calm a single one of us down. We all glowered at each other, like we were all in a Mexican standoff. Uh, so, um, how about this demon thing? Sam was cut off mid-sentence. You mean the one standing right in front of me? Alex hissed. Jake then lunged forward, grabbing him by his shirt. Look here, you little piece of shit. Do you want our help or not? Because I'd be more than happy to walk out that damn door and leave you to fix this on your own. Get off of me! Alex whined, fighting desperately to free himself from Jake's iron grasp. Jake threw him back onto the couch. Alex glanced over at Sam. He nodded to him. Fine, we'll accept your help, but only because we have no other options. And once we get this cleared up, I don't ever want to see you ever again. As for her, though, I then pushed Sydney behind me. If you so much as look at her the wrong way, a swirly will be the least of your concerns. I coldly assured him. Okay, okay, let's just get down to business, Alex retorted. All right. Tell us about this demon. Have you had any more encounters with it? And are you still seeing dead people? I proved, still fuming from our prior interaction. Uh, no, and yes, Sam said. We tried to contact it again without the book. No dice, Alex added. Looks like we need to find that book then, Jake muttered. What was the book called? Sidney squeaked clutching my arm for reassurance. Lysandra de la Cabre, Sam said. The blood of the goat. Jake then raised an eyebrow at me. Don't give me that look. I actually paid attention in Spanish class. All right, well, how do we find it? Sidney asked. That's what I've been trying to figure out, Sam remarked. I've tried looking it up online, going to bookstores, and hell... I even tried finding that weird hippie lady. Nothing we- You mean this book? Jake interjected, showing Sam his phone. Uh, yeah, um, how did you- Sam, you dumbass, you were probably spelling it wrong. I told you there's no Y in Sangria, Alex spat. Why didn't you look up how to spell it then, wise guy? Hey, hey, there's no need to squabble over this. We found it now, so let's just focus on tracking this thing down. Jake, is there any in stock anywhere close? I asked. Yeah, it says there's one left at Maggie's Antique Shop. Let's try there. Well, that sounds like a plan. My car, um, isn't big enough to fit all of us. We'll meet you guys there, I suggested. Yeah, cool. And Sydney, feel free to ride with us if you like. Alex grinned, winking at her. I wouldn't get into a vehicle with you if you were the last person on the planet. Ouch. Fine. Have it your way, then. See you there. We rolled to a stop in front of the dinky little antique shop. All the windows were dark. Maggie's Antiques was emblazoned across the storefront in exaggerated red letters. Paint pooled below them, in what I can only assume was meant to resemble blood. Enter at your own risk was scrawled haphazardly underneath. The words sent a shiver rippling through my core. I couldn't imagine any normal human being willing to step foot within a 15-mile radius of this place. I think I'm going to stay in the car, you guys, if that's okay with you. I don't feel comfortable around that, that Alex guy. Sidney said. I don't blame you, Sid. If he tries anything at all, I'm going to make him wish that he was never born. I uttered. Sidney then blushed. You're my hero. Come on, Jake. Let's help these two shitheads out and then bounce out of here. ASAP. Alex is really pissing me off. I'm with you on that, the fucking creep. We approached the store and found that Alex and Sam were already waiting for us. Sam leaned against the wall, while Alex stood with his arms crossed beside him. 
Oh, the pretty princess won't be joining us. That was it. I shoved him hard against the wall. He winced. I've had it with you hitting on her. One more sick comment or lewd gesture and I will fucking end you. Got it? Okay, man. Jeez, I was just joking. Calm down. He sputtered, clawing futilely at his hands in a vain attempt to escape my grasp. Is everything okay out here? An old, ragged woman then appeared, peeking out of the door at us. A shawl was wrapped around her head and the lower half of her face, concealing it from view. One of her eyes was missing an iris, pure white, save for the intermittent, vain spider webbing within. Her unexpected interference startled me. Yeah, everything's fine, ma'am. We're actually just looking to make a purchase, I said, relinquishing my grip on Alice's t-shirt. She then studied us for a moment, her good eye scanning us like a cyborg. All right, come on in before I change my mind. We then followed the eccentric woman to the counter, staring in awe at all the trinkets and oddities scattered all around the store. Are you going to tell me what you came here for, or are you just going to stand there and gawk at everything? She said. Oh, yeah, right, um, sorry about that. Uh, we came here for a book. We're hoping that you might have a copy, Jake said, showing the woman, who by now I assumed to be Maggie, the image that he pulled up on his phone. Oh, yes, La Sangre de la Cabra. It's one of my best sellers. I'll get it from the back for you. Alex then nudged Sam in the ribs. What the hell, dude? You said it was one of a kind. You're telling me we could have just picked one up at a bookstore the whole time? Hey, that lady told me there was only one. It's not my fault that she wasn't telling the truth. Yeah, okay. Where did you meet this lady? In a dark alley somewhere? Real reputable source you had there. Yeah, maybe. You boys are in luck. I have one left. That'll be $40 even. $40? Why is it so expensive? Alex demanded. Spell books are not cheap, you know. This is on the lower end. You don't want to know what some of the collector items are worth. Yeah, whatever, lady. Sam, you're paying for it anyway. After all, you're the numbskull that buried the first one. Fine, here's the money. Let's hurry up and get this sorted out. I think I saw a crawler on the other side of the street. We'll meet y'all back at the house. We arrived back at Sam's house and began our preparations for the ritual. Sam had been proactive and set up everything that we needed beforehand in his basement. Candles were littered throughout the room, and in the middle, a faded wooden Ouija board leered at us begging us to use it. Matt, I'm scared, Sidney whimpered from her spot beside me. We all took a seat in a circle around the board. Alex was strategically placed opposite Sidney to avoid any more incidents. It's going to be okay, Sid. It won't last more than a few minutes. Then we can get out of here. I can sit with you in the car if you don't feel up to this, I said, gently rubbing her back. No, I'm fine. I can do this. Oh, now I get it. You two like, like, like each other. Alex sneered. No, no, I mean, I'm, uh, it. Yeah, zip it, bozo. Jake growled. Alex instantly averted his gaze. All right, I think we have everything we need. Is everyone ready? Sam asked claiming his spot at the front of the board. Yeah, but this time, you're not reading from the book. Got it? Alex retorted. Fine, Mr. Know-it-all. You take it. He then tossed the book to Alex, who clumsily dropped it. Ugh, I'm afraid you'll fuck up the pronunciation. How about we have the Spanish whiz take a crack at it? He said, beaming the book at my chest. I caught it and shot him a dirty glare. Sure thing, asshole, I mumbled. Everyone put their hands on the planchet, Sam ordered. 
We did as we were told to do. I thumbed through the book until I found an incantation that I had researched earlier that day. The candles flickered as I recited it, and a chill crawled up my spine. I knew the book had done its job. I could feel a presence in the room with us. We were not alone. I guess we need to determine if it worked. Is anyone here with us? Sam asked. The board immediately shot to yes. Oh, shit! Jake muttered. Sydney and I glanced at each other wide-eyed. Is this Payamon? Sam continued. The planchet then moved and back to yes. We, um, we need you to leave us alone, he said. The planchet crawled across the board sickeningly slow and then moved to no. Alex stared at the board in terror, his body trembling. Sam locked eyes with me and nodded to the spell book. I continued reading. The room began to vibrate and the book quivered in my hands as I tried to regain my composure. I glanced up for only a second. Sydney then screamed. Standing all around us were dozens of mutilated corpses. Their lifeless eyes bore into us as I read, striking fear into my heart. With every word, they shuffled closer. Keep reading, Sam yelled. Alex then released a deep guttural shriek as one of the dead dug its rotten claws into his shoulder. I wavered. Sydney then placed her free hand on my leg. You can do it, Matt. Her reassuring words sparred me to continue, right as a mangled, broken woman reached out for Jake. Suddenly, the atmosphere shifted. I opened my eyes, and the room was back to normal. The entities were gone, and I could no longer sense something with us. Alex was still screaming. Goodbye, Sam yelled as we threw our hands from the planchet all at once. No! No, 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 no! Alex cried as he kicked the board across the room. Alex, dude, calm down. They're gone, Sam said. Oh, oh, what? Uh, yeah, okay, you're right. Cool. We then stood up and began to make our way to the door, totally shell-shocked from the experience we had just had. You did great, Matt, Sidney whispered. Thanks. I didn't know if I was going to be able to keep going, not until I saw one of those freaks heading for you. Her cheeks then turned bright red. She grinned at me. That's sweet. Thanks for your help, and uh, sorry about him, Sam muttered, out of earshot of Alex. Don't mention it, Sam. Just get that little weasel under control, will ya? Alex then emerged from the stairs as we were turning to leave. Bye, thanks for your help. Oh, and Sydney, I hope to see you again. I whipped around to face him. Time ticked in slow motion as white-hot rage enveloped me from the inside out. I swiftly reached out and snagged Alex's hand before he made contact with Sydney's rear. I twisted his arm, nearly snapping the groggly appendage. I shoved him to the ground and left on top of him. I began to beat him relentlessly, my fist smacking his face back and forth like a tennis ball. You stupid piece of fucking shit! I fucking told you to leave her alone! Each word was met with a furious blow. Jake, Sidney, and Sam all stared slack-jawed at the spectacle. Alex reaped and fought on the floor, begging me to stop hitting him. But... I did not stop. I kept going until his face was a swollen mess of blue, black, and red. Lots of red. Once all the anger was drained from my system, I stood up, gave Alex one last kick to the gut, and wordlessly walked out the door. Jake and Sidney turned to each other, visages a melting pot of exhilaration and disbelief. The pair promptly followed me out the door, leaving Sam to assist his bloody friend. The ride home was a silent one. We got back to the house and awkwardly stood around in the living room. 
Uh, Jake, I said, eyeing his room. He took the hint. Oh, um, I have to go make my bed. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, that was weird. Jake never makes his bed, Sidney remarked. Yeah, that's strange. So, um, I'm really sorry that you had to see that, Sid. Something in me just snapped. It was disgusting, the way he was treating you. And when he almost touched you like that, I... Tears began welling in my eyes. Sidney placed a hand on my arm. I... I lost my cool. Matt, it's okay. That scumbag had it coming. I thought it was sweet of you to stick up for me like you did. It meant a lot, actually. So, thank you, she said, softly kissing me on the cheek. My face turned red as a beet, and a smile inched its way across my face. I'll see you tomorrow. We should both get some rest. It's been a really long day. You're right about that, Sid, I said, still grinning ear to ear. And start gearing up for another road trip. We've got a siren to stop.